or plant-based. I know there's, there's, there's protein in all sorts of different plants, but do you have any recommendations for somebody that's maybe trying to put on a little bit more muscle tissue or as an athlete is trying to recover, um, as far as if they're going to yeah. follow your specific plan? Yeah. Let me, let me throw the question back to you. Um, when you're thinking about your protein intake, um, do you try and eat a certain number of grams per kilogram body weight? Yes. What, what's your target? So generally speaking, I'm around a gram per pound, a gram per pound. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I'm, I'm working out multiple times per day. I think most people probably don't need to hit that amount. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm a little bit higher because I do weigh my food and measure things. I've tried all sorts of different diets with podcasts. I, I, I was, I was straight up vegan for several months. I did carnivore. I did keto. I did all sorts. I mean, and I, I'm able to do that just because, you know, I, I'm, I'm young and, and active. Um, mm-hmm. I think arguably speaking, I felt the best and people are going to, they're, they're going to hate me when I say this, when I was predominantly plant-based. Okay. Felt the best. Describe it. What do you, what do you mean by that? Yeah. So, well, here, here's one thing. Uh, I did a podcast with um, Juliana Hever, who was a co-host of, uh, I don't really know her, plant-based dietitian. She's brilliant. Um, she wrote like the idiot's guide to plant-based eating, all sorts of things. So, yeah. but um, I did a, a, a Facebook show with her uh, called Home Sweat Home. And that was back when I was like, we were in Manhattan filming for two weeks and I was eating like meat sticks and your typical like bodybuilder type stuff. Right. I was like, Oh, I could only do this. I don't have carbs. Like give me a slim gym. It wasn't a slim gym. It was some, something, you know, along those lines. She's like, Joey, you need to, you need to eat more plants, eat some more green things. I was like, Oh, fine, whatever. I'll try it out. Right. So then I, in a Manhattan, fortunately enough, there's a lot of like these places that you can go and just like get some Brussels sprouts and whatever. So I started doing that and started incorporating that in more. I said, all right, let me do this whole plant-based thing. Went three months plant-based. I was vegan, gluten-free, soy-free, like, and that's pretty much what I did. Uh, my A1C dropped. I, I did the blood work. It was down below five. My testosterone went up, which interesting, which makes, makes sense. Right. I mean, less inflammatory foods, probably more conducive for that. I was probably sleeping better. Um, I was moving around quite better. Uh, joints weren't, I don't know if the joint was because of the inflammation, getting better probably, but I've been lifting really heavy lately, just putting on some size. So it's kind of one of those things where chicken or the egg. Um, but I did have a good amount of energy. My, my sleep was pretty good. And ever since then I've been tackling like a lot more vegetables. Like there's a day where I don't have a massive salad or a bunch of greens and do that. So I've incorporated a lot of that, um, from doing that. So yeah, that's how I felt better. There's your answer. Okay. So let me ask you this. Uh, did you notice that when you were eating a plant-based diet that your recovery was faster per chance? You know, I feel like, I feel like it was. And at the time, what was I doing? I was, I was training full time. So I'd have 12 to 14 clients per day. And I think the one thing that I was trying to do with the plant-based thing is a lot of people like you can eat plant-based and eat uh, Oreo cookies all day long, right? Like you can do all sorts of different things. So, um, I was trying not to get it by way of doing shakes and smoothies all day. So I was having a ton of, ton of asparagus, like bunches of bunches of asparagus. Cause that's one thing that I felt like I just put you know, some salt and pepper on. It was pretty delicious to me. I was having a lot of beans, a lot of lentils, uh, a lot of kale, a lot of spinach and a ton of fruit, which my wife was like, Oh my God, you're having carbs. Are you okay? Because you know, I was the dude, right. I mean, I'm two, I'm 210 pounds right now and six, three. Um, I know I look amazing, so it's okay. You don't need to, talk. <laughs> so, but I was, I was having this, I'm like, a bowl of berries and all, I still, I wasn't having the breads or the chips but I was having all this fruit and I was feeling much better. So all of these things I've still incorporated in my life, unless I'm specifically doing something for the podcast where I'm doing like, you know, some other specific diet, which is harder for me to do because I'm like, I crave having the berries. I I crave having like a a grapefruit or or a smoothie or something along those lines. So yeah, that's my, that's my plant-based story for you. Okay. So is there anything stopping you from eating more fruit right now in your, in your daily life? Nah. No, it's not like you're trying to eat a low carbohydrate diet for any reason. No, like, you know, may, maybe, you know, if I'm getting ready for a shoot or something, I might cut down, do a little uh, carb depletion and carb load, honestly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe pl- mess with my sodium a little bit, more bodybuilder type stuff, but I don't recommend that to pretty much anybody. Got it. Um, but I know my body enough and I've done fitness competitions where I know that within five or six days, I can drop like 10 pounds like real quick, but then I'll load back up and then I'll kind of reverse diet. 
back. Got in. it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay. So your original question was what's the deal with protein and you know, how can you get protein on a plant-based diet? So the truth is that it's actually quite easy. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's sort of like a lot of folklore in the world of, uh, you know, plant-based diets that it's going to either make you protein deficient mm -hmm. or that something's going to happen and it's going to, you know, you're going to develop either muscle wasting or like osteoporosis, or you're going to end up with like lower bone mineral density and all this. Sarcopenic obesity, right. It's a word that they throw around. Exactly. So, um, the truth is that, okay, here's what I recommend. Um, for somebody who's an active athlete like you, right? Somebody who is training, uh, resistance training in particular, mm -hmm. what I would recommend is somewhere on the order of about 1.6 grams per kilogram. So I know that's less than what you're currently eating right now. Is that, but, full, is that full body weight or lean body mass? Uh, that's actually full body weight, but let's, so let's do the calculation here real quick. Give me your, your body weight right now is 210. 210. Yeah. Okay. 210 divided by 2.2. Uh, times 1.6 would put us at 152 grams of protein per day. And currently, how many are you eating? Um, probably right around 200 sometimes. Right around, 50, yeah. Honestly. Okay, cool. So you're basically at like one gram per, per pound, like you're saying. Yeah. Okay, so my recommendation would be to eat uh, 1.6 grams per kilogram total body mass. Okay. Um, now, if you are not a seriously active individual, you're not as athletic, then I would recommend bringing that down to somewhere like 1.2 or even one mm -hmm. right now. It's true that people who are older than 65 end up with a slightly higher protein requirement. And so for those individuals, they're probably going to want to go back up to or somewhere around 1.2, but you know, for your average individual, who's like moderately active, um, eating, you know, call it 1.0 gram per kilogram, um, 1.0 gram of protein per kilogram body weight is, is perfectly sufficient. So Let's take your average individual. Let's say you're, you're 180 pound male. Okay. What you do is you take 180 you divided by, by, you divide that by 2.2 to give you their body weight in kilograms. And that number is 81. And then you multiply that times one. Okay. So that would mean that your, your, my recommendation would be to consume somewhere around 80 grams of protein per day. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to increase that and go to 1.2 grams per kilogram, by all means, that's totally fine. So if we did that, the number would be closer to about hundred. So my prescription would be find a way to get between 80 and hundred grams of protein into your body on a daily basis. No questions asked. So the next question is, okay, fine. Well, where do you find that? How do you do that? So there's the truth is, is that when you're eating a wide selection of plants, you can get small amounts of protein from, you know, a whole collection of food. So bananas have protein. Um, peaches have protein. Lettuce has protein, right? But the truth is that the contribution of protein from each one of those foods that are not objectively protein rich foods is going to be relatively small. It'll be like 6% of your total calories, which is not enough. It's not going to get you to those numbers. So instead of doing that, what I would recommend doing is eating more protein rich foods that come from legumes. So beans, peas, and lentils, any of the legume variety is fantastic. Uh, I happen to be a chickpea freaking fanatic. I love chickpeas. And I do want to give you a quick answer on this. What do you think about oxalates and anti-nutrients and having to cook things and pressure cook? It? Yeah, exactly. So um, your question is what, do, is it necessary to cook in a pressure cooker? Yes. Um, to the best of my knowledge, the answer is no. So like if you took uh, black beans as an example or chickpeas, right? You could pressure cook them and it'll cook them faster. And in theory, it's supposed to reduce the oxalate content and the anti-nutrient content. And as a result of that, it's going to be more digestible, less inflammatory, right. right? But even if you didn't cook them in a pressure cooker, I don't know if there's a significant scientific evidence. I, at least I haven't read it. I've seen like a small, small, it was like, I don't, know, don't call me on it's like four or 6% maybe out of the, the total amount of um, nutrient density and that that might cause something. But like most people, I, I haven't really noticed a, a huge difference with people that are like, having like 15 almonds instead of 12 or don't soak their nuts or right. <laughs> I, I laugh every time I say soak the nuts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> carry on. Yeah. So point is if you want to pressure cook them by all means, you have, you can, but you don't necessarily have to. Right. Um, so again, eating legumes, beans, peas, or lentils, any version of bean, any color of pea, any version of lentil, by all means you have one cup. A simple way to think about it is one cup of legumes gives you approximately 15 grams of protein. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you have two cups per day, that's 30 grams of protein right there. That's one third of the total protein that's required for the day. Okay. For a 180 pound male, as an example. Okay. And then in addition to that, you can also consume things like quinoa. That's relatively protein rich. Okay. Whole grains tend to have a significant protein content as well. Right. And then again, you'd have the contribution of other fruits of um, starchy vegetables. And then if you put the whole thing together, 
and you do some math and you put your food into chronometer or another diet logging tool, what I find and what a lot of our clients find is that they meet their, their protein requirements much easier than they suspect. Yeah. They're sort of like, oh my God, it's going to be really hard to get the protein. But in reality, if you just use a diet logging tool, you'll find that you're meeting your protein requirements and beyond. It's, it's actually not that hard. It's pretty easy when you're looking at that. I think a bunch of asparagus, depending on like 12 to 15 grams. And you know, I think people that uh, originally veganism, plant-based, whatever terminology, plant forward eating that you, you want to give it. I think people were really concerned about that. What's your viewpoint? Sure. Red light, green light, yellow light, orange light, mango light um, on um, protein powders like pea-based, plant, uh, brown rice-based, anything? Yeah. So I put those in the, in the green light category. Personally, I think we put them, Robbie, we put them in the yellow light category, perhaps as a a general rule of thumb. Technically yellow. Yes. Sure. Which just means cognizant of being how much you're consuming. The the core teaching point behind green light is literally eat as much as you want. Your body's naturally going to tell you you've had enough. It's just so much water, so much fiber. So anything that's refined goes into the yellow light category just to start having a conversation. Okay. How much of this should I really be having? Right. right. And, you're, and you're looking at the quality and the quality. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, yellow light doesn't mean it's bad. Right. Like, oh, that's a terrible food. It's no, like, let's just be cognizant of how much we're consuming and be thoughtful about it. Okay. Fair.